Good evening. Thank you for inviting me to this very timely event. I am Chris, thank you for your excellent question. Uh, TJ is not alone. There has been a nationwide and very systematic attack on merit and equality of opportunities in K-12 education, especially in the gifted and talented programs, as well as in higher education. So for example, in 2016 uh, in Montgomery, Maryland, the public school uh, district's middle school magnet programs adopted a sweeping reform for the explicit purpose of making the racial mixes of these magnet programs mirror the demographics, the demographics in the county. And this is illegal racial balancing. In New York City, uh, the mayor, Bill de Blasio, and education chancellor introduced a series of racially motivated reforms to face out academic selection. Uh, the standardized testing, which is known as SHSAT, that has facilitated the success of the city's world-class specialized high schools and similar programs to replace merit and academic selection with racial balancing and identity politics are on the rise from coast to coast. For example, Lowell High School in San Francisco gifted and talented programs in Howard, Maryland, the aggressive ethnic studies curriculum reform in California and elsewhere. So I see three general issues with such a systematic attack on merit and excellence. One, it penalizes hardworking students from the so-called overrepresented groups, many of whom come from socioeconomically disadvantaged backgrounds. Two, it stigmatizes and backfires on the intended beneficiaries with issues such as academic mismatch. Three, in general, there, this is a race to the bottom that hurts our entire education system and international competitiveness. This is a politically convenient bandage, which ignores the root causes behind the persistent racial achievement gap. So as a result, parents and concerned private citizens have risen up to challenge these attacks on equal education rights, merit, and standards across the country. In many cases, new immigrants of Asian descent are spearheading this movement to defend true equality but we are not fighting for narrow self-interest. We're fighting for everyone and for what should be evidently true for the, for the American creed, the American dream. Earlier this year, I participated in an impressive campaign in California that defeated a deep blue proposition in America's most populous and bluest state, which would have reinstituted preferential treatment and legalized government sanctioned discrimination. I have two takeaways from our David versus Goliath battle. One, we're on the right side of the history. Two, we must promote our messages of morality and truth via national alliance building. In other words, we must mobilize across ethnic, racial and geographic lines um, this shared mission of equality under the law and push back divisive identity politics. So to conclude, the D TJ case is not an isolated event, but a chain of events in the ra radical progressives agenda to assault merit. Yeah. I just want to make a, a more general point that the fight for TJ uh, in Northern Virginia must be fought in tandem with fights elsewhere. And I challenge um, the attendees and panelists here to, you know, to rethink about the critical goals of our education system, the definitions of diversity in merit and disadvantages. How do we conceptualize these um, in connection with improving our educational quality as a whole? Um, we also need bipartisan policy solutions to meaningfully reform K-12 public education and maintain academic standards at the same time. So we need to take politics out of educational policy making. And lastly, on behalf of my coalition, Californians for Equal Rights, 
I encourage every and each one of you to continue to engage in uh, productive conversations like such and engage in this greater cause of equal rights for all. Thank you.